Okay, hello and welcome to another How to Play StarCraft 2 unit guide. In this guide, we'll be going through every single unit in the game, all of these that we have already covered, as well as Terran and Zerg in future episodes. So we're going over their strengths, their weaknesses, their abilities, and some uh, matchup-specific comments to help you out on the ladder. And today we're going to be focusing on the Oracle. The of fate now, disclaimer, there. we're only going to be going over the baseline multiplayer the unit, not the co-op or camp campaign variants, they're just too many. So again, Our focus on short. the baseline unit. And it's quite exciting, because today we're finally taking to the skies with Sky Toss. An AOD, Basically the Air Force. Now, let's talk about its development law. Now, this was introduced... This unit, the Oracle, was introduced in Heart of the Heart of the Swarm expansion. And it's been an interesting addition to StarCraft 2. It it's been balanced and rebalanced a whole bunch of times. If you watched the, the original videos, it's unrecognizable. And in fact, in the latest patch, which is patch 5.0.2, uh, BU dated 20th August 2020, basically about a month ago, they made a change, which is that revelation duration increased from 15 seconds to 20 seconds. What does that mean? I'll get to that Who's in the ability guidance? section, but the point is that they're still balancing this unit, they're still making changes, so you're gonna have to keep your eye on that. Nazi now let's talk about how this fits into Protoss law. Now here's the thing, the Oracle the as well as the Dark Templar head. and the Void Raid, these it's are from a group called the Nelazine. The Dark Templar. These were a group of Protoss that you were outcasts from the main group, which is why you look at the aesthetics like shiny gold, 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 dot gold. Basically, after the first Great War and the fall of Aya, their home world of the Zerg, they kind of rec reconciled, and as a result, they now fight together as a unified Protoss called the Dalam. And the Oracle specifically. In fact, the Dark Templar we've covered in a previous episode. The Oracle itself focuses on temporal abilities, aka time manipulation, something you'll see later in this video. As for the Void Ray, we will get to this very controversial unit in a future video. Okay, so let's talk about how do you make an Oracle. Now, it's produced from, let's get the board, a Stargate. So to get the Stargate, you get a Pylon. Let's switch this on. We're going to have to be toggling this a few times. Because there is an example that needs to be made clear. Okay, so this should be done. So once the Pylon is done, you get a Gateway. This should be instantaneous. Yep, okay. Then you get a Cybernetics Core. And then finally after that, you can get the Stargate. So the buttons to do it is B, E, B, G, B, Y. And then finally BS. Now this is the default hotkeys if you're playing on grid or something else it's going to be different you're going to have to check your setup. Okay, So that's what you get from it. From here you can buy an Oracle. Oracle perceiving. It has a build time of 37 seconds, 150 minerals, 150 gas to be supply. We're not going to go too much into that today. Now let's talk about its upgrades. How do you make it better? So there's three places you can get the upgrades from. Well, two actually. One is the cybernetics core and the forge. So let's make a forge. Okay. So the forge you can get shields. So all Protoss units, be it flying, ground-based, and their buildings, all have shields. If you get plus one shields, it makes the shields a bit better. You can see 400, 400, 600, so on and so forth. You seek guidance. Now here's the thing. If you want air upgrades for any Protoss unit that flies, you? you get it from the Cybernetics Core. But there's a catch, specifically for the Oracle. There's an Let exception by down the books. Now if you get armor upgrades, an upgrade so, yeah, complete. this works normally. But here's the thing, if you get weapons upgrade, it does an not apply to the Oracle. The complete. reason being is that the Oracle's main attack, the Pulse Beam, notice that this isn't a 1. This is level 2, which means it's already all other air units are plus one. Oh, the reason really is, sure. is that its ability is considered a spell and not air weapons. So it does not benefit from uh, air upgrades which is quite an important distinction. 
because you see the Oracle is a flying spellcaster, not a combat unit. What I mean by that? Well, let me show you. In its abilities. Now, the first now before I go into the abilities proper, I need to caution you that um, right now I have the setting of uh, initially energy set to full. This will not be the case when you actually build an oracle. It has to sit and gain energy over time. I could switch it off, but then it makes the demonstrations harder. Okay, so that's something you need to know. If not, you can't cast all the spells at once. So. Okay, so to talk about its abilities, I have some demonstrations prepared. So let's talk about the first one, which is Revelation. Okay, so if you go to the Oracle itself, you read what it says. It is cause an enemy unit and structure within the targeted area to grant vision for 20 seconds, reveals clone or bubble units and structures. Okay, that's a, load, that's a mouthful, but it's actually mean. Okay, so here's the thing about the Oracle Let us demonstration. You seek guidance? Now here's the thing, normally you I won't see. be able to see where your enemy army is. I can because it, that's how it works in this mod. Let's say I fly over here, I'm like, oh enemies! Okay, the stalkers are flying, the oracle flies far far away. But here's the thing, even after the oracle leaves, everything that is tagged with this, well, tag on top, you will still have vision of it. And this is very important because it then lets you know like where the army is. You can still see this banshee but it wears off after a period of time. Now the other important thing which is that it can... it's it's a detection spell. Let me show you what I mean. Now this oracle is permanently cloaked. Here it is. Permanently cloaked. So the Archon cannot attack it but if you cast Revelation on it it's quite dead. A more practical example is let's say there's a Dark Templar coming to attack you. The Archon can't do anything and it's gonna be, you know, slowly popped. But cast Revelation, this becomes revealed. It's no longer cloaked. Only for that period of time, but that's all the Archon needs to do. Another example is let's say you have a couple of lurkers. Okay, for Zerg units with the bird, we can't attack them. That must target detected units. So you know it's there, you cast Revelation, okay, the Archon can go in and try and kill it. Of course, in this example, the Archon's not gonna win. This also applies to building, and that's the crux of what Revelation is. We'll go a little bit more in terms of its uh, application in the strength section, as well as the, as well as the uh, matchup specific comments. So that's Revelation. Let's talk about the next spell. Which is Stasis Ward. Uh, oh, this is a this is a funny one. This one messes with this particular mod of it works. Okay, so let's take this demonstration. Let's say you just fight. You have a bunch of stalkers and you have a couple of the bottles. Now I've got this demonstration, these guys are dead. Deceased. Now what is Stasis Ward? At least a cloak stasis ward at the target location for hundred and 70 seconds once activated by enemy ground unit, the ward is stasis 21 seconds, trap units cannot be attacked or affected by abilities. Okay, so what does that actually mean? You seek guidance? Okay, I need to remember to do this, switch this one off. How can I aid you? Just think, if I, I see. okay, if I cast a stasis ward here, they're gonna attack the it. But if I cast it, let's say here, just head. outside of vision, no, 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 you wait. Our window is short. Okay, now I attack, watch. So what happens is that these units over here, they basically are out of the game. They're just frozen in time. And in this particular example, this allows this product army to slaughter half of the Zerg and ignore the red one. And by the way, they, they can't attack them. Cannot attack units in stasis. And when they wake up, you just blow them to spin them. This is this tends to be used defensively and then we'll get we'll get onto that later. But that's the crux of what it does. Let us so that is Stasis Ward. And finally its last ability is Pulsar Beam. Okay, let's clear it and let's move on to demonstration three. Okay, so what is Pulsar Beam? 
I'm gonna do the same thing. A bunch of adepts against a bunch of links, roughly the same, a little bit of gas for the oracle itself. Attack. Okay, so what does Pulsar be able to do? You have to switch it on. So, Charlie, the oracle's Pulsar Beam allows you to attack ground units, gains two energy per second. More importantly, it does 15 damage and 22 versus light. It's a beam weapon, so it does it by by ticks, or basically by time. Let me show you what it actually does. Let's turn it on. It zaps. So it fires this beam, which basically zaps anything on the ground. And with air support, it allows these adapts, which we've covered in the previous video. Uh, you should check that out if you haven't. To basically survive this circling attack. And they're hard, handily won. Now, so those are its abilities. Let's talk about um, its strengths and its weaknesses. Now, I've got a special treat for you guys because I actually asked on none other than the Pylon Show what are some of its strengths and weaknesses. And this is what they said. For new players, thanks. Weaknesses for the Oracle? Wrong unit, mate. None. <laughs> None. <laughs> that is one of, like, whenever I see the Oracle, I always bring up, well, not always, but I like to bring up the fact that it is actually useful at the beginning of the game, the middle of the game, and the end of the game. There is no point where the Oracle is not useful. It's a detection unit, it's a harassment really? unit, it's a scouting unit. It can stasis ward, it can be a support spellcaster. It's just an incredibly good unit. Its only weakness is that it doesn't shoot up. Strength, strength number one, it can kill every building in the game except for a hive. If it's at full energy. That's what they said. Useful, what those guys. Okay, but let's really get to that. Okay, let's clear the board. They basically said the Oracle has no weaknesses. None at all. Now I'm just kidding, I'm trying to make useful content. So, I have prepared an example. Okay, so the first strike that it has is it's got very good harassment potential. What I mean by this game. Now I've set up this base. Bad it's news. a little bit weird, ignore these extra geysers. And let's say you want to try and attack I the base the with stalkers. The it's not going to go well. Yeah, you might be able to but you're going to take a lot of damage. But with the Oracle, you could fly in, turn on the Pulsar the Beam, and... And just get the heck out of here. Just like that, four workers killed. And if this happens right at the start of the game, it's really effective. The other thing you could do is you could plant a Stasis Ward. Oh, the tank blew it up. Get it, try again. Oh, the tank keeps blowing it up. Nope, never mind. Basically, you place a stasis ward, you trap all the workers in stasis. But the point still stands. You fly with a pulse beam, you can kill a lot of workers. This this goes for all matchups. We'll get to that uh, a bit later. Now, its next strength is scouting and detection, aka revelation. Let's clear the board. Go on to the next example. Okay, it's a bit of a tougher demonstration. Now here's the thing, let's say that this army over here doesn't know about this army over here, it's got a disruptor, again covered in a previous video. Let's say we just attack and like you're not really paying attention, you're back here at home, and like oh no there's a fight! Uh, okay fire, fire the beam and it's just dead and your army is just annihilated on the spot. Annihilated on the spot. But let's say you actually decide to use your, you know, your flag loud, you're trying to figure out, okay, where's the enemy? Just having a flag unit gives you that vision. Okay, you fight them, you cast that relation, you run away. Okay, you decide to attack, but you can see them, fire the disruptor. Oh, well, we also died. Uh, if I had a bike, I could have pulled it away, but... Yeah, having, knowing where the enemy is and how the enemy attempts to kill you is absolutely key in StarCraft. And the Oracle just gives you that that insight to help you with the game. Now, the last part, which is what the good people of the Pylon Show were talking about, is its long-term use. Uh, okay, so I like many other units like the... 
like the Adept or arguably the Zealot or the Dark Templar or even the Tavern Banshee future video there is no other unit in the game that can be used at the beginning Easy for worker guidance. harassment as we saw it can be used to defend the states like with stasis what it can be used in late game to try like figure out where the enemy army is and there's actually no other feminine unit Let no other female begin. unit that has such long-term utility except maybe the queen video for another day again if you're getting attacked put down traps if you go into late game revelation kill workers whenever you please the of faith this is what may not and the others were, were talking about that being said the oracle has some actual weaknesses okay let's talk about those okay the first is that it's a high value unit and we have an example to demonstrate this okay so similar setup as before we even added a stargate now here's the thing, as mentioned, it's kind of expensive. 150 minutes, 150 gas, and nothing to scoff about. This turret base is slightly better defended, it's got a tank, but more or less the same. The key difference is that in this example, the turret actually got a widow mine because maybe they, you know, scouted, scouted the Stargate. And here's the thing, let's say we turn on the pulse, but we jump in, we want to get a bunch of kills, and... It's gone, it's dead. There's nothing more. De there's almost nothing more demoralizing as to a Protoss player as losing your first Oracle, except having links, you know, flood through your wall. But ladder issues, okay. This is the thing. Everything that we just talked about, everything that the pilot show folks mentioned, is moot if it just flies into a widow mine and dies. So if you lose it early on, it loses so much potential, and it's. I mean, it's a morale check. Now the other issue about it is that it's a high micro unit and what I mean by this is, let's clear the board, is I'm gonna load, no let me load this one instead. Oops, uh, hold on, ah uh, here we go, again okay, here's the thing. This is the antithesis, antithesis to the beam that Protoss is just a move. You have to micro the Oracle, you have to have it out of the map doing stuff. But let's say you forget about it, you go back home, you're, you're back going up. The enemy army doesn't move out, they say, oh hey look, an Oracle. Um, yeah, I'll take that. And just like that, yeah, it knows the army is here and it goes up to investigate. These guys swing in from here, they catch the disruptor, you don't even get a chance to fire and you lost. And here's the thing, if you spend a lot of time by going the Oracle because you have to, you might neglect things like pro production and upgrades and you lose the fight anyway. So it's really a matter of skill and proficiency. And it's not like the stalker the Oracle can just walk in and just stalk everything that's path. Now the other issue about the Oracle is that, or the other weakness, is that it's fragile. What do I mean by that? It's not direct fighting. Let me show you what I mean. Here we have an example for this. There we one. Ah, okay. Here we go. Ah, yes. Okay, so here's the thing. Let's just take this fight. Okay, now this is a standard fight. You're probably wondering why I'm showing this to you. It's for a reason. Now, the thing about the Oracle is that the armor of the Oracle is low, and what that means is that it cannot take direct ground engagements. Okay, so this army of Zealots and Immortals won pretty handily, but let's take away the Archons, let's take away the Immortals, let's add in a handful of Stalkers and 5 Oracles. In fact, now we have to remove a few. Yeah, so. Approximately the equivalent in units and gases, we traded out the Archons and the Mortals. Let's see how this fight goes. Turn on Pulsar Beam's attack. So here's the thing. You can mass Oracles, and while it's entertaining to watch, it's not as decisive as, as the other battle. In fact, if we actually go down this route, you probably won't have charge. 
so yeah, we have to chill out the teams. Furthermore, if the enemy gets any sort of like anti air up, whereas be it void rays or phoenixes or any of the others, you're probably not gonna have a good time. And also because it's energy based, you're not gonna have that straight up fighting potential, generally speaking. And notice that the losses here were a lot higher than in the previous example. So yes, you can't use it in straight up fights. Now let's talk about matchup specific comments. Okay, so here we go. Alright, so PvE of versus anything. It's good as, Extrapolating it's good as an early game harassment unit as we saw in the previous example. In the previous example to go in and attack worker, middle lines and such. Um, it can cast revelation, it's good against Protoss, Terran and Zerg, it's just a good unit attack provided you have the micro. And provided the enemy just doesn't get sick and tired and just charges your, your main base. You require my skills. Now in PVT, it, as mentioned earlier, it can get one-shotted by Widow Mines. Yeah, it can get... Oops. This better be good. Hold on. As mentioned earlier, it can get one shot by Widow Mines, which makes it weak. So if you're not paying attention and honestly they're bowed so you can't see and you don't get out of time, you just lose it. The other issue is that in straight up fights. In a straight up fight, especially if the Terran is going for Back. It's not really a good idea to have oracles because uh, let's turn on the pulsar beams. Like the cyclo can out micro the oracle and kill it. Furthermore, if you somehow have a situation where you're going up against a freaking Thor, it's not gonna end well. Now, as for PvP of Protoss versus Protoss. Okay, so the meta is evolving How because of I its uh, changes, but generally speaking, it's considered a bit weaker, especially if the Protoss all into sure. you. Basically, if the Protoss, like, let's say you get, let's say you get like four stalkers, and you know the enemy just goes for more, and you just fight, you kind of die. Because, yeah, the numbers. It, it can be good again with those stasis wards, but it's. But again, if you can survive that phase of the game, then it's gonna be very, very useful. Now, for PvZ. Now, for PvZ, as mentioned, it can get good worker damage, it can use to shoo away links, as we saw in this example here. But. At the same time, you also need to be careful about queens. They'll be around almost any zone base. They have anti-air uh, attack range. And also, but again, like in any situation, it can be safe for revelation later. So, so in conclusion, the Oracle is a powerful unit, one that has value throughout the entire game, and unless you let it die, you know, this scout, it needs your attention to maximize its value and it's something you must consider if you're gonna use it Let us begin. the gas invested also must be weighed carefully and maybe just maybe that gas and your attention might be better spent elsewhere maybe a do toredas an erodine oh doesn't work Okay, never mind. Okay, so if you liked this video, um, do leave a like and subscribe. I post content whenever I can, mostly StarCraft 2. If you have any feedbacks, comments, leave it down below. And one more bonus from the Pilot Show. Oh, I I have have these useless facts have helped this you. This guy is trying to make this useful YouTube content. <laughs>
These are useful facts. 